Hello friends, welcome to the Wednesday show. Today I'm going to tell you the details on how to enter for our giveaway for reaching 300 subscribers. We're actually already almost at 320 and I want to extern, extend my thanks to you for that. So here what you have to do. First you have to be a subscriber. Second you have to like the video and third you need to leave a comment down in any of our videos. If you do those three things you're going to be entered for a random drawing for our next giveaway that will happen before the end of this month. We plan to do a small giveaway every 100 subscribers, a larger one at 500 and a, a really large one at 1000. So by sharing our videos and helping us grow the channel you also have chances to win gifts. We're going to continue these giveaways throughout the year. Also, in order for you not to miss any of our content, please make sure you have your notification on and I will show you in this video how to... You can go to any of our videos. Here I'm going to one of my favorite channels. And first of all, you need to subscribe. As you see there, it's subscribed. And next to it, there is a bell. All you have to do is click on that bell and another window will come and will ask you to check send me notifications. Check that box and you're going to be able to get a notification every time we post a new video. I hope this was a helpful tip for you guys and please Today follow I'm going to show and you some uh, techniques on how to finish wood if you want to make more finished projects rather than rustic projects. Today will be a very short video but the competition is starting today so please like, share and subscribe. I want to show you what will be our big giveaway when we reach a thousand subscribers. And I decided to give away one of these primarily because I found it to be invaluable and for small shops you don't have to have a, an air tank or hose around. I virtually use this in every project I built since I bought it. I love it. It is about 120 to 140 dollar item if you are to buy it because the battery comes separate. So at a thousand subscribers this is going to be our giveaway. Not this one but a brand new one. So by helping us getting there you're also helping, helping your chances of becoming one of our winners. Thank you. Always make sure before you cut the wood that the two pieces you're cutting are flush with each other. Again, that prevents you from having to measure all the time and makes the cut accurate. Since this is going to be a finished project, using a planer is a must. If you don't have a planer, a sander will work, it will simply take a little longer. You need to pass the, the boards through the planer several times and you need to make sure that it is all set for the same width on the planer. By having the same dimensions, when you combine the boards, you're going to have a very uniform product versus having ridges or edges that so, and you will not know that the boards were connected rather it would look like one big piece of wood. The advantage of that is of course that it is much cheaper to buy narrower wood than buy wood that it is very wide. As you can see with every pass the boards are getting better and better and you continue until you are satisfied with the face of the board. This is a somewhat tedious uh, process. And of course it's more time consuming if you have to sand versus having a planer. The results however can be the same. And as you can see we can start with very rough boards like in this case but end up with very nice and smooth boards which is our end result. Having an assistant here help because it does not let the board droop which sometimes make a divot on the end of the board but you can also 
walk around and, and catch the board. So an assistant is helpful, but not necessary in every instance. Based on your level of comfort in operating the machine. Using an edger is very important. And you can do that either before or after you use the planer. But when you combine two boards together to make a wider board, an edger is a very valuable machine. Again, you can sand or hand plane the two pieces, but the result is much better and much quicker with an edger. You need to edge only the sides that you are going to connect with each other until there is absolutely no gap. As you can see here, I simply check the two pieces and at this point there is a gap, so we're going to go through the edger again until we have absolutely no gap when we put the two pieces together. This step ensures a great end result and you must not get impatient here. Always check until you're satisfied that the two boards connect perfectly. Then if you need to plane the boards more, this is a good time. But remember, small imperfections are fine because you're going to be able to use the planer again once the two boards are connected. Usually if the piece is too wide, you don't have that opportunity. But in this specific instance, two boards connected are not too wide for my planer. So you have to decide at which point you're going to finish planing, either before or after you combine the pieces. That is where planning is very important and where it pays great dividends to plan ahead of time. Continue looking at the boards until you're satisfied that they are perfect. And here that's what my wife is doing off camera. And while we're satisfied, then we move into the next step. And of course, the next step is combining the two boards. The two boards are fairly good there. You can see a little gap, but that will be taken away when we actually use the glue on uh, the two boards. And here I use adhesive, uh, construction adhesive, but I lay it very, very thin. And that way there the is no problem. Spinning. Now it is time to clamp the piece. And as you will see, as we clamp it, the piece comes together very nicely and very tight. In fact, when the project was over, it was virtually impossible after we stained it to see where the two boards met. I use a dry cloth to clean the excess glue versus a wet one because I found it works better and does allow the stain to penetrate better. When the wood gets wet, sometimes the stain shows differences. Now that the two pieces have joined together, I'm pushing them through the planer again. And again, how wide your planer can accommodate will determine if that is a step you can do or not. And also, a sanding can always take place. And even after you plane, sometimes you might have small imperfections. Like I did have some small imperfections here. And I did a light sanding over the two pieces that actually made the two pieces look perfect. When I asked friends to tell me where the two pieces met, they actually could not. And even I could not point out exactly where the join was. It ended up being a great piece. So detail and patience is important here. Plane or sand and continue doing so until you are satisfied that your piece is exactly how you want it. There is no correction you can make after you finish this process and once you start with the uh, stain or paint. Paint is more forgiving than stain, but stain is not forgiving at all. So before you start staining, you need to make sure that the two pieces are in absolute perfect condition and that you have made the two pieces exactly as you want them. As you see, I've used the, even after the sander, I'm planing it a little more to eliminate any ridges. My planer has very good knives, they're brand new. If your planer is not perfect, 
probably sanding should be your last step versus planing because you want to ensure absolutely zero defects at this stage and you should focus on the top surface the visible surface of your project and you should spend there the most time rather than making sure that both sides are perfect. You can even see here the board is in really good shape. Here I'm using my router to add detail and I always like to add some detail and a router is a very very good tool to have. I have a, a router on a table and a router that I can freehand with and as you can see it provides a very nice finished detail that makes the piece look totally professional and you can put it in your house next to anything that you bought in a store and look actually better than what you bought in the store. Okay friends, I hope you enjoyed today's program, just today's episode and if you do please hit the like button. If you didn't the other button works as well. Please share, like and subscribe. Sharing the video help us grow faster which also help us do those giveaways more frequently which in return gives you more chance of winning on a giveaway. I appreciate your support and I do hope that you're going to become our next winner. I will see you soon, in fact this Sunday, with another build. Have a great week.